Okay, um, so uh, now more generally about training and testing. So uh, the algorithms that we've described, they have lots of parameters and you want to tune those parameters. Um, and uh, what you shouldn't do is you shouldn't uh, tune the parameters and then, uh, and then report the best result that you get out of tuning the parameters on the data set that you have. Like this would be overfitting and this happens um, um, this happens surprisingly often. So what you usually do is you have your standard uh, machine learning style split where you have a training set and the training set is used to find the values of parameters for your system and the training set is usually further split into a training portion where your system can actually look at relevance judgments, a validation portion, this is for tuning meta-parameter values. So uh, here you adjust the constants in your algorithms and tune the map and the F1 and things like that. Uh, and then you have a testing system where you run your system, uh, the testing set where you run your system once and uh, report the results. Um, what's interesting about information retrieval is the way you do the splits is a bit different from most of machine learning. So uh, in machine learning, you would, uh, you would split your data instances into training and testing sets. Um, in information retrieval, the convention is to keep the data the same but split the queries. So that would be similar to saying that uh, if you have a multi-class classification problem in machine learning, some classes become your training classes and other classes become your testing classes. Let's, uh, think about the implications of that for, uh, for doing machine learning. You wouldn't actually be able to learn anything with any of the standard algorithms. Um, but that's the convention. So you keep the corpus, the collection of data the same. Some queries become training queries, other queries become testing queries. The reason you do that is you avoid the vocabulary biases. You avoid things that are too specific to one set of queries. Um, uh, in some cases, you, uh, you do the more conventional split where you split by documents. So the documents get split into two sets and then you have a single set of queries running over them. Uh, that's usually done in, uh, in streaming applications. So if you're writing a system to monitor the news or to detect events, uh, then, then you do splits like that. For, uh, for the normal retrieval experiments, you always split the queries into two sets and keep the set of documents the same. All right, so let's summarize. Um, evaluation is what allows us to tune the algorithms automatically. It's, uh, it's, it's really a great thing. So the, Cran the Cranfield paradigm, you have a test collection and you compute the numbers um, instead of running user studies every time you change the algorithm. And that's really a great facilitator because it allows you to tweak your algorithms a lot faster than you would be able to um, otherwise. We talked about evaluation measures, uh, sort of a, a, a TLDR thing, version of this is uh, don't ever use accuracy or anything like accuracy. Uh, these tasks have un unbalanced class distributions, so accuracy is just a horrible metric for them. Um, uh, if you use set-based measures like recall precision F1, keep in mind that they depend on a threshold setting. So if the threshold setting is unconstrained, reporting a recall precision pair is meaningless. Uh, but if you do have uh, a prescribed threshold setting, then uh, it does make sense. Uh, in general, what you want to use is you want to use rank-based metrics, things like mean average precision or NDCG, or recall precision plots to evaluate your results. Uh, if you have query logs, then you don't have relevance judgments, uh, but you do have things like Kendall Tal and BPREF, should always do significance testing and uh, always split the data properly. All right, um, that's, all for, uh, that's all for evaluation.